Um, here we go. I'm run finally catching up with some man in the vans, uh, frantically running around the UK today. We're at the uh, Moto Verde ride day at VIP. I've uh, got to bomb down to Cusses in a minute to look at a supercross track. And I thought, right, come here, get some riders in the van. Um, and I've got a very sweaty, hot Tom Grimshaw, because Tom's just been out um, at the Moto Verde ride day. How is it out there today, Tom? Yeah, it's mega. Yeah, it's mega. It's, it's a good turnout, and it's, uh, I think it's a mini British Championship out there. <laughs> it isn't is, it? it? <laughs> We're all having it out there. I could see it when I, thought, when I turned up. I was like, okay, they got more here than last year. Yeah. And yeah, like, so you got Walshy, you got, yeah, there's a fair few out there. Sphinx, a few others. Uh, what are you riding today? You on the, what are you on? on the 450 looking? today, just because um, it's Tuesday. It was a quick turnaround from the British yeah. at the weekend, and I'm still cleaning up from that because it was a bit of a mudder. So uh, four, it. 450 was sitting there, so well, why not? That's a good starting point for me then. Let's talk 450 because, um, listen, you know, Dave won't mind me saying this. Uh, Dave's a big unit, your old man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no hide in it. No hide in it. Um, and obviously, you know, now, you know, you're pushing on, you're a fully grown man, you're big. Um, so, are we gonna see uh, are we gonna see you on a 450 in the not too distant future or are you still not sure yet? It's it's still unsure, like that's why I'm I'm doing a few little rides on it now, like we're just speaking about Rocket Till Sundown, I'm gonna yep. do on a four fifty, just doing these little races because I do enjoy riding it and and I've heard your comments, I've heard everyone's <laughs> I comments. don't start blaming me for it, but no, I... no, everyone's saying you need to go because it's just I am I am yeah. a big lad. So yeah. it's there's no no fighting out. I've tried things in the past with with my weight and everything, but it's just this is my natural stature. So yeah. I've just got to go with it. You say that though, you see, that you've got to move it, and here you are um, leading. Yes. Leading your first, um, as far as I got my stats right, your first time you've led a British Pro level championship. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to dump pressure on you or anything like that, but. You know, you're obviously enjoying life at the minute. The Chambers team is a great team for you, good fit. They, yeah. you know, everybody pulls together. Um, are you at this stage with two to go? With the MX Nationals? Are you uh, overthinking it? Are you getting getting those moments where you're kind of there after a hard day's ride, or just watching TV or whatever, and thinking, hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a little bit there. It's it's I'm I'm not putting any more pressure on myself than like. Obviously, I've got the red plate at the moment, but I know everyone says this, but I'm not really bothered by that. It's just taking weekend by weekend, and that's what I've been doing throughout the year, and trying to stay as consistent as possible, getting those high, high yeah. points. And uh, it's been working so far, but there's two more to go, and um, I'm fired up for it, so I'm, I'm, I am ready to bring this home. I want to bring this out, I, so I'm working hard for Fair it. play, mate. I'd love to see you bring it home. Uh, the work that you put in and your dad and, and everybody around you. Hawkstone, is it one of you? Obviously, that's what we got the weekend. Yeah. Round five of the Lich and MX Nationals. Is that uh, one of your more favourable tracks? It's, it, it is. I, I do prefer the hard pack, not going to lie, but uh, Hawkstone is an, is an enjoyable track and uh, I've seen they've been putting some hard work up yeah. there, so it'd be good to ride so, uh, some new changes because um, we constantly seem to be riding the, the same sort of track, so it's nice to mix it up a little bit. Um, but no, nah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not bothered. I, I'll you seem it. You seem quite pretty casual about it, yeah. and, and, and all good like that. It's funny you say about tracks and and doing that. Obviously, you you know you're a professional rider. Let's say semi professional. What do you, you know? Do you manage to fit in any work in between? Or are you, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a personal. Because that's what we say. Pro. Yeah. I mean, it's very yeah. difficult to find a pro pro rider these days that are just getting paid yeah that's I, their job like fair play it just goes to show where we're at you're leading a, a british championship and you're, you're not even full-time pro no but that's just the state of the sport at the moment it's just like i i i go racing at the weekend also i do my try and do my bit during the week as well with balancing with work but lucky i'm i'm self self-employed i'm personal training throughout the week so i get my clients like straight off this i've got to dive home so I've got clients tonight, so you I don't tell me you're training with them, will you? I uh, do a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah Christ. Uh, and that's why that's why Tom can sit there with no breasts, and that's why I'm sitting here <laughs> with mine growing all the time. Um, yeah, fair play, fair play. But I suppose that's not a, that's a pretty good job to have, though, with what you're doing. And so, is that a job that you cho you chose it with with your motocross career in mind because it gives you flexi time? It does a little bit. I uh, uh, it's a funny story. I got onto it. It was. Dad said straight after school, oh, just come work with me and 
I'll be off, be on site, you know what I mean? And <laughs> sweeping the floors, tea maker, and I done about a week of that. <laughs> I done a bit a week of that, and tea I thought, maker. no, because I, I I worked hard in school. I did work yeah. hard, and I was just going down the easy route because he just bribed me in with the, I I can go riding when you like. But classic, I, I classic. He wants you to go riding more than he does, so he yeah. can have bloody days off exactly, as well. Yeah. I know what he's thinking. But yeah. I, I done a week of that, and I thought, no, nah, I need to go and do something I I just barely enjoy. So I went back to college and. Um, and I just felt with sport, because I love sport and everything. Yeah. I just didn't think about the personal training route. And then I just got halfway through the year. I thought, actually, no, this, could, mm. this can work. This can go somewhere. So um, then, uh, yeah, went through college, got qualified, and then started at a gym. And now I've got my own way with my own business. And that's awesome. That's why I work through it a week now, yeah. Oh, fair play to you, mate. That's really good. So I suppose with that in mind, then, uh, just before I get onto that question, what remind me what age you started racing, not riding, racing. Um, you started riding quite young. Yeah, I started riding quite young, but I actually I came into it a little bit later. That's what than I mean. So you didn't. So you didn't do the. You didn't go. Some obviously just start motocross and dive straight into racing. Yeah. You you kind of didn't. Well, my dad my dad's uh, background is enduro. Yeah. So I actually was thought I was going to be an enduro rider. Right. So then we but there was the enduro scene at the time. The kids wasn't brilliant, so that's something of motocross races, and then we went sort of that way. So, yeah. but I started racing in the Red Bulls. We all remember the Red Bulls about. I was about 10. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, 10. Make, stop it. Memories, you're making me it? feel so ridiculously <laughs> old. Because you're sat here now, like six foot plus. Yeah. And I, I can now visualise you. I can visualise you obviously doing the commentary at the Red Bull and some of those tracks. Yeah, I can see you now at Cullum going around like that, that big. Yeah, mega memories. Bloody hell. Yeah. Mega yeah. Memories. But what I was going to say off the back of that is obviously the sport, like so many of us, it gets under your skin. Um, so although you're doing the personal training thing right now, have you ever had any, any kind of like thoughts of when you do eventually hang up your boots? And you, what, so how old are you now? 21. Yeah, so you, yeah, so you got you got still plenty of time to uh, in motocross as a as a British Championship top level rider. Um, maybe it's too early to ask this question, but you know it sounds like you're pretty switched on with the getting the other job. Have you ever had considerations of like? then going into being like a rider coach and, and putting the two together, obviously Absolutely, putting yeah. your physical knowledge of training yeah. in with you. Your Absolutely, like, and I- Good, because the sport you, needs people like you. Yeah, but you always need that. I know they always say, oh, just stick with your goal and everything like that, but you've always got to have a plan, sort of B, I say, to rely on. And they like saying, I've got to earn some money somehow, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, the racing, it, it's okay, it pays for the takeaway on the way home. <laughs> well, you allow yourself a takeaway, yeah. fair play. But that's, that's uh, until the sport gets just a little bit bigger with yeah. that sort of way, I've got to have a job. And we all know eventually one day I want to move out and I want to do these things, and you've got to have a sustainable income coming in. So that's why I did start the personal training bonus I, yeah. I love what I do and then I go race on the weekend so at the moment I've got the perfect balance I would say it's not you know we all have aspirations obviously for you you're in in, a, in the driving seat in the MX Nationals uh, and to win a pro championship I know how much it would mean to you so I'm not going to answer, answer that question I'll get you to ask her that answer that but you know beyond that uh, any aspirations of us that you want to get to a point where you're a top level rider in the UK which you are already at Obviously, to back it up with a championship or two, three, four in your career would be fantastic. GPs, where, where are you at with that? Because obviously, for a load of us watching them, the dynamic, for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into the bullshit politics of it here, but that's kind of changed now, isn't it? In like even following that GP career pursuit has got more difficult. Is that has that had a knock-on effect? Do you feel the same about that? Do you now look at GPs in a different way? Yeah, like I. A couple of years ago, actually 2020 COVID year, I was committed to do the actual European MX. Yeah, news. sorry, GPs yeah. and EMX, yes. I just want to point out. Yeah, so I was committed to do that. And then obviously the whole COVID thing, but it actually made me rethink about where where my racing lies and with Europe and the EMX 250 is just as stacked. Yeah. You know, but I have more of a racing now, I think, than I do in the MX2 where you're just grabbing on, trying to grab onto them. And the reason we're grabbing onto them is like, I've learned more this year than ever when I've been over practicing in Belgium it's just I don't want to criticize the UK that much again I don't want to go no, down mate, that way no, but no, it's, it's what it is we're it, just not geared up yeah for it yeah we're generally, we're generally not geared yeah. up for it and that's the same I, I'm I'm going to practice tracks and you've got to deal with groups you've got to deal with 15 minute sessions in the tracks are flat and everything like that you go to Belgium and the tracks open and the at cost. one yes cost yes is it 
Tracks open at one, you go and do your business. Uh, open track, it's the roughest tracks. You're with the GP lot and you just, I've been there, I went there about two weeks ago and just within three days of riding, I felt like my level went up just with, yeah. just being there for three days. And I was like, imagine being out here for a year. Yeah. So, but just riding over here, we just, you just can't, it's, very hard to listen compete. this is the million dollar question like how we solve it or whatever in your opinion then uh without sort of trying to put words in your mouth which i don't think i am it, it almost seems then like collective it's it's like uh the, the governing bodies and we all know that there's you know there's more of them now and mm. that's diluted the sport down a bit and I, I think we're too far gone to uh you know to, to get it back to one yeah but obviously from a point of view of a pro structure and from grassroots up like you just said there even to even if um they could all get together and, and then talk to people that own practice facilities and even have a like one day a week where maybe these practice facilities open only for pros, pros yeah. and make it a different kind of yeah. setup we've so all, you can we just do, we do all need to come together sort of and i know it's very easy, easier said than done but in everyone's saying oh where's the next big talent from the uk coming from and i'm we've got some talent don't get me wrong oh, I'm watching yeah. the 85 class them brilliant but also, they need to get to Europe. Yeah, you know I mean, and they need support with that because I can't. I'm saying it's all great me talking about how great Belgium is, but I again, we just talk about my job. I yeah. can't. I can't afford to keep going out there every week and stay out there. I've got. I've got a job here, and then, yeah, um, and fun. And, and, and it's, of course, it's not getting any cheaper. Like no. Just just travel in general, yeah. particularly right now. Yeah. So it's it's a very difficult. So I actually said to this dad, like we've been doing some Europeans this year, and I said to him, I was like. When I went done that practice in Belgium, I was like, to be fair, we've got to pat ourselves on the back to where we are with the thing, with, with the circumstances we've dealt with over here and what yeah. we're doing in Europe. It's like I'm qualifying for EMXs now and I'm in the mix of sort of where the points are and racing against the, the semi factory guys, the next upper comers, and it's just like, to be fair, we've got to pat ourselves on the back with the, what the oh. facilities we're dealt with over here. So yeah, definitely. Definitely, and you're doing a grand job. So obviously your season's going good, you know, you're leading the MX Nationals Championship uh, and fair play to you for that. In the Revo, uh, you know, where you're at with that? You, have you had any standout races where you thought it's, you know, I rode good there or have you had any ones where you've gone, oh yeah, made a bit, made a bit of a balls up at that one. I mean, yeah. you know, it's easy to keep looking back and pulling yourself apart, but I'm going to do that to you anyway. Yeah. So, so what's been the sort of highlight of the year so far? 100% I, you've got to say is that that strange race we had at Fox Hills um, with uh, the top runners crashing and actually gave uh, it was a carpenter in front of me yeah. and then it was me second and yeah. I was running second the whole race and I was just I was just I was like, I don't yeah. know what to do now I've never been there I was just like I was just riding isn't that, around. Isn't that bizarre though in, in a way because you've been there so many times in youth motocross. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a just different level. It's, it's in it. Just it's thinking, just that yeah. thing. Yeah. You get into your comfort. Well, not comfort zone, but you get to where you normally are, and then as soon as you get taken out of that, yeah. it's like, oh wow, what do I do now? Yeah. And I was, I, I rode really well, and I, I, unfortunately, well, Conrad was on us, on a steam, and, and yeah. he came through, and um, he got me in the end. So I got a third, but with the protests and stuff, I got a second. So I was like, that's a standout <laughs> ride. I'll take, I'll take that whatever. And then what uh, would be, the, what would be the sort of low point thus far? Then it's been just about one or two races where I've just had unfortunate yeah. bad luck and uh, one of them was at Whitby at the weekend where I hit a rider off the start uh, so I crashed there and then with the one line track trying to make things happen yeah. I, I tried something and it just didn't work out I crashed again so it was just unfortunate situations I've been putting with these races but that's, that's, that's what you get in that's it, that's it. it. Yeah, you, that's and it. as long as I'm trying I was trying hard and that's that's all you can ask for really so and I, I managed to rebound for a fourth in the second race so yeah um, it's been good it has been good and i've been consistent, oh you've had a great so. consistent year yeah. yeah so let's talk about um we've spoke about a little bit the, the family dynamic because obviously dad used to ride your uncle i think used right, to ride i mean yeah. you are you know it, it it's it's dirt bike riding family um how's dad been what i mean by that is um i asked you about the question about leading a championship is he getting a little bit edgy is he is is it is his uh actually changed is he getting a on edge with it all. I think it's just gave us all a big boost. Yeah. To be fair. So it's a good it's positive just, thing. You're oh, not yeah, you're not feeling it like nothing more like oh um like we're more nervous or anything like that. we're taking it again just like a normal race but we can see the enthusiasm like he, he he's got again he's got to maintain a job throughout the week and but he's give he's given him me getting results at the weekend is giving him even more motivation throughout the week where he can come home from work and we're in the garage and we're working on the bikes and 
just getting yourself prepped up for the weekend it just yeah. gives you that extra bit more motivation doesn't it so yeah. uh, that's all i've seen but it's a fair play see because i yeah you know 21 yeah i you've got plenty of time that's the thing mm. um you know i mean yes obviously we talk about i've mentioned it many times on this in the man in the van you know our um you know somebody like Herlins or Roxin and those guys come along and you know they're kind of freak like by winning world championships at stuff at that age and of course what that did is kind of changed the, the yeah everybody kind of thinks oh you've got to be absolute hauling and winning a world championship by 18 but it doesn't always work that way yeah. Josh Coppins Joel Smets all those guys kind of were later in the year in the career particularly in British motocross as, as well so what would be as we sit here in in the real world real you know not you're not a eight-year-old kid seven-year-old kid anymore yeah. that aspires to be a world champion I don't think no yeah. you know you, because reality bites you've kind of got your head around that's probably not gonna happen yeah so as we sit here Tom Grimshaw what before you hang up your boots what what would you want out of it I I want to be as close as I can to being a British champion and that's yeah. the goal you've got to go for you looking at it now it might be quite steep but I'm just gonna keep on working and like anything could happen I'm just, again I, I never thought at the start of this year I'd be sitting third in the British Championship yeah. going into the last uh, two rounds, uh, last round now. Yeah, so yeah, last like, time, yeah. I never thought that I wanted, obviously, you aim for those goals, but you never, when it happens, it's like, oh wow, yeah. like, you've got to wake yourself up to it. So um, I've always had that as a bit of a goal in my head uh, growing up, watching the British Championship DVDs and everything like that. But, um, so, yeah, I'm just going to say I, I want to be as close as I can to winning a British Championship, and I just want to be in the mix of. And just be remembered as one of the top British yeah. riders. Like we all know. Well, British riders. I can tell you right now, mate. What you will be remembered for is a grafter. That's uh, that's no denying that. From the outside looking in, we can see how much work you put in as a family collective and yourself. Uh, so keep up the good work there. Of course, if you ended up being a British champion, uh, you might have a chance to be on the nations team, which would be yeah. that would be something else, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 We got that coming up. Uh, yeah. But before you can do all that, you know what he actually wants to be, it, more than anything is uh, the Rocket Till Sundown, a shameless plug, uh, Rocket Till Sundown champion, which is happening uh, next Wednesday, the 9th of August. There you go. Uh, that's the current winners, Elliot Banks-Brown, 2018, Harry Kulas, 1920. Haven't put Josh Gilbert's name on it yet. He won it last year. So um, you're riding the 450 at it. Yes. So you've got a fighting chance. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Tom will be there racing at Cuss's Gorse next Wednesday for Rocket Till Sundown, and it'll be great to have him with us. Uh, mate, thanks for coming in the van. Uh, thanks for putting up with the heat. I mean, you yeah, are literally well, look at me. I'm dripping drenched. with sweat. Um, this is not nervous. This no, is, I'm not come nervous. Off of track. I'm just dripping. Oh, God, I was so nervous talking to Jeff. I just literally <laughs> went into a, a shameless sweat. You would uh, think I'm a, I'm a personal <laughs> trainer, am I? Just a... No, honestly, it's really humid today. I woke up this morning thinking, isn't me? Is it ridiculously hot? <laughs> Um, so listen, get out there and do your second moto so in this little mini British championship we've got going on yeah. at the Moto Verde day. Uh, mate, thanks for coming in. I'll thanks see you so at the much. weekend. Uh, if you're going to Hawkstone, get over the fence, cheer this man on. Uh, Tom, we wish you the best of luck and good luck with, uh, with both championships. Hope you get it where you want to be. Thank you. There you go, Tom Grimshaw. Yeah. This one, again, brought to you by uh, Whole Shot Motorhomes and uh, Crossbox as well. So thanks to those guys for helping out. Right, let's go. I'm going to go out and watch. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.